USPSA, unlike many shooting disciplines, uses several types of targets. The most common use is the metric target. It has four scoring areas that are defined by perforations. These perforations are not easy to see, so I've taken a marker and highlighted those so that we can, they'll show up on the video. The A is worth five points regardless of the caliber you shoot it with. The C and B areas are worth four points if you're using a major caliber and three points if you're using a minor caliber. We'll discuss that more in the next segment. The D is worth two points with a major caliber and only one with a minor caliber. Another target we use in the United States but, but is much more common internationally is called the classic target. It only has three scoring areas and again they're defined by perforations. I've also used the marker to highlight these for the video. The A zone is also worth five points regardless of caliber. The C is worth four points with a major and three points with a minor caliber. And the D is worth two points with a major and only one point with a minor caliber. One important thing to note about these targets is if you break the perforation, meaning that your bullet touches a higher scoring area, you get the higher score. The same is true of the edges. If you break the perforation on the edge of the, of the scoring and non-scoring border, you get the score. That's important because a miss is, worth, is penalized at minus 10. So not only do you get the points you could have gotten if you hit the target, but you lose points from your overall score. If you take these targets and just turn them around, so rather than having the tan side out, you have the white side out, these are what we call no-shoots. These targets are penalized at the rate of minus 10 per hit. Again, the outer scoring edge is important because if it doesn't break this perforation and it's outside the line, it, do, it doesn't count as a hit. If it does, it counts as a hit, which is a minus 10 point. Quite often, we'll take a scoring target like this and overlay it with a, a no-shoot target like this to present a harder target. If you hit both targets, you can both score a hit and a no-shoot target. However, more importantly, if you hit this no-shoot target and don't make up the hit on this target, it's both you can get both a miss penalty and a no-shoot penalty. These things get rather complicated and uh, you really shouldn't worry about them too much. Just remember to hit the brown ones, don't hit the white ones. This is called a hardcover target. And the reason for that is it has this black paint which denotes something hard and penetrable that you can't shoot through. To hit in the black on a target like this is not penalized, however it's not a hit. So if you know you have one in the black, make it up with one in the brown. We also use steel targets in our sport. The most common are probably the plates, which are either generally 6 inch squares or 8 inch round targets. We also use something called a pepper popper. This is the shape of a pepper popper. Um, I didn't want to carry one in here for this presentation. They're rather heavy because they're made out of steel up to a half inch thick. And they're either 42 inches tall if they're a full size popper or pepper popper, or 28 inches tall if they're a, a mini popper or US popper. All steel is scored that if it falls down, knocked over, it scores five points. The minimum distance on steel is 23 feet, and that's because of the splatter effect. When a bullet hits a steel target, it tends to disintegrate, and those pieces can fly back at the shooters and spectators, and that's why everyone on the range must wear eye protection at all times. The next thing we were going to talk about in our next segment is power factor, or major versus minor scoring which we discussed briefly on these targets, and we'll go further into depth. Yeah, just... 